Welcome, everybody, to another one of USA Table Tennis Ask the Champ, the interview series where we bring on some of the all-time greats, and boy, do we have one today. Gao Jun, who is well-known to everybody in the American table tennis community, four-time Olympian, three times as a member of the U.S. Olympic team. I think she's a nine-time singles champion at the U.S. Nationals. I think she's won doubles 11 times at U.S. Nationals, and just all-around great person as well. Gao Jun, welcome to the Ask the Champ interview series. Thank you. Hi. Good morning, everyone. It's great to have you, and uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us today. You know, I talk about uh, Gao Jun. You're also a, the uh, national team coach right now for the United States, and you've got a great young team, well, it seems like, headed on the way up. Talk about your playing career, you know, going to the Olympics on four different occasions, winning a silver medal at the Olympics, but now having success as a coach. I'm wondering, what is it, the difference between the success you experience as a player and the success you experience as a coach for your team? Is that feeling different? Is it the same? Do you get a better feeling as a coach? Or is it just a completely different feeling? Uh, actually, it's a totally different feeling. As a player, it's, a, it's more easy. You know, it's pretty easy for, because you just need to take care of yourself. You know, take care of your match, who you're going to play, and then uh, watch their video and then just, uh, you know, prepare, you know, for yourself. Basically, once you finish your match, you, I mean, except uh, the team event, you know, once you finish your match, you watch your teammate play. And then for the individual, <clears throat> once you finish, you can just, you know, leave right away. You don't have to worry about, you know, next. And then it's just, uh, you know, not that, not that tired. And as a coach, the, the different, you know, from the player and then the coach is you have to take care of everything. And uh, especially when you take um, the younger uh, player going to the international tournament, you have to take care of, you know, their, sometimes they forget their paddle, they mm -hmm. forget their, you know, the badge, you know, the bag, the shoes. I mean, so many times happen for the, for the young kids. So, you know, it's, it seems like, you know, every, every uh, moment you have to open your eyes to, you know, check them. If they're on the bus or they're, you know, they get a table to practice. And then, you know, the young kids, when they're going to the international tournament, for them, it's also new, right? So they want to meet a friend, you know, so they're like nonstop talking. <laughs> so, yeah, so as a coach, you know, uh, I have to control them a little bit, like, hey, it's time to practice. Hey, it's time to back to our room to, you know, do your homework and then, you know, take some rest. And also prepare the team match. Like I watch your match. I watch the other one match. I have to watch all the matches. Sometimes I don't even have a time to go to, you know, toilet sometimes, you know, it's like, you know, match, you know, go one by one. It's, it's really, you know, it's a rush. So uh, as a coach, it's a more challenge. I, it sounds like it is, you know, and we talk about the difference between the experience as a player and as a coach, but there's also, I'm wondering about the difference of the experience of going to the Olympics as a member of the Chinese national team and a member of the U.S. team. I mean, obviously with China, you would presume that you're going to be a, a, a favorite going into the Olympics. And, the, and as an American in 2000, 2004, 2008, you're probably not going in as a favorite. What's the experience different for you as an Olympian playing and representing China as opposed to playing for and representing the United States of America? Uh, play for China, um, it's more pressure. You know, uh, as a Chinese team member, we're going there, it's for to win the medal. And it's not like, um, you know, uh, I'm just doing my best. You know, I don't care the result. And then um, play for China, I do, we do, you know, we all do care about our result. And everyone, everyone, you know, care about the result, especially uh, table tennis uh, in China. You know, it's like a national sports. You know, I mean, the, the, the feeling that I have is you have to win the first. If you finish the second, the meaning is you lost. Yeah, so that's, that's a hard. that's a different. Yeah, that's a so that's 
that's why uh, a lot of pressure, you know, when you represent China. I mean, it's, it's, um, it's normal because we spend a lot of time to train. You know, we do want to get something back for what we did. And then uh, play for U.S. And then everybody knows that the U.S., we don't have that, um, you know, uh, training, I mean, facility. I mean, compared now, it's much better. You know, at the time that I play for uh, U.S. for the Olympics, you know, we don't have that many good players. And we have no juniors and then only few, you know, uh, players to play. And then I remember that, um, I mean, I, I never played Olympic trial before, you know, but for the nationals and then for the team trial, there's only eight or nine uh, girls to compete the U.S. team trial. And then now you can see there's a lot, you know, the juniors and then adult, you know, more, um, more people uh, join this sport. So it's getting better. And then of course, you know, when you have no time or no uh, training partner to practice with, and then your uh, expectation is going low. So when you go into Olympics, you think that, okay, I have nothing. Okay, uh, no, no training and then nothing. So I go to Olympics, I just tell myself, okay, I just do my best. You know, whatever the result, I take it, yeah. You make, raise a great point about the evolution of the national team for the U.S., particularly on the women's side. You guys have had tremendous success of late. Do you sense that the international table tennis community gets the feeling that the U.S. national team is on the uptick, is on the rise? I mean, at one time it was probably thought of as kind of a doormat, that it's an easy win if the U.S. is there. Probably not so much right now. As a coach for the national team, do you actually sense that, that there may be a change of impression of the international table tennis community with respect to the United States? Uh, yes, it changed a lot. It changed a lot. Before, um, like when we go to the international tournament and then people think, oh, we play U.S. team. That meaning, okay, we have an easy match. You know, but right now, you know, the feeling that you know, for us and for myself, oh, and then this, oh, U.S. team, you guys are doing much better, you know, so they're, they're really, you know, pay attention on us. So in this way, we give them pressure. You know, as a last year, like a World Cup, mm -hmm. you know, yes, we lost to uh, China and Japan, but they're, they finished first and second. But you can see the every single match, it was not that bad. It was very close. And then uh, you can see uh, when Lily play um, the, the lefty, you know, the, the girl from Japan, you know, she almost, almost get it. Yeah. So, uh, you know, you can see there's a, a lot improve, you know, for, for, for U.S. team. Yes. Well, with that, Gao Jun, let me turn it over to Jennifer Wu. She's going to come in and ask you a few questions as well, as well. And, of course, she's one of your star players. So, Jennifer, I'm going to turn it over to you. Okay. Hi. hi, Coach Gao. Hi. Hi, Jennifer. How are you? Good. I'm good. How are you? Good. Just wake uh, up. I have, <laughs> <laughs> I have a few questions for you. So sure. first uh, is, when did you start playing table Why you choose table tennis, uh, not that other sport? Uh, this is a long time ago. <laughs> An easy question, yes. Uh, I started to play table tennis when I was uh, age five and a half. Wow. And uh, yeah, the reason I play is just because of my father. You know, he's, uh, you know, a table tennis fan. So uh, he really, you know, loved table tennis. So he wants me to play. So he sent me to the school. So that's why. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, like uh, like like everyone you know in China, as yeah. you, right? And yeah. other uh, Chinese players, you know, we start because of our parents, right? So uh -huh. our parents love the sports, and then in China we have to follow. <laughs> we have to follow <laughs> the parents. Yes, no matter what. Okay, follow. Listen. So that's all. Yes, and then you and me same. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so did you choose short pips or someone else chose that for you? 
Uh, actually, at age five, you know, yeah. almost turned to six, I really have no idea what kind of, you know, style is that. You know, yeah. I don't get a chance to choose. It's just uh, at that time, at that generation, the short pips is a popular uh, style. And the so short pips, you yeah, never, the, the, never use regular. Only no, the the short pips and the pen hold. It's a uh, popular sports in China, and in I mean, you can see, you can check at that time, the 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 world class players are from Japan, and they are pen hold and they're Chinese. I mean, they're Japanese and they're Chinese. So most of the style are short pips and the pen hold. So I was going to, um, you know, choose the left hand. It, ju it just, uh, you know, I was really short at that time. And uh, the coach saw my mom also short. So uh, the coach said, uh, if you're really short, if you're short as your mom, it's no good, you know, as a lefty. Because uh, when you play, you know, righty, and then when they give you, you know, wide angle, it's really hard to reach. So that's why, you know, I was like, uh, you know, in the half and a half. So uh, I coach choose, okay, you use right hand. So <laughs> I ended up with right hand you know, with short hips. That's all. Hmm. Um, so how many hours of training every day when you were in China national team? Uh, normally, um, six days a week and, uh, like a morning two and a half and yeah. the afternoon two and a half. It's a, and the morning it's, uh, and also including the physical training after mm -hmm. like, uh, practice. And then we have some, uh, physical training over there. So including overall, maybe we can say morning start from, uh, 830 and then fin uh, finish like uh, uh, 11. And the afternoon start like uh, 2.30 and then finish around the five. And then uh, in the afternoon, sometimes, you know, we finish at five, the, the, um, the drills, you know, the schedule finish at five, but the most yeah. players choose to stay, do some extra, you know, practice, either serve or serve return or some, you know, coach, have some favorite player to give some, you know, multiple. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so what's the training uh, difference between China, Chinese national team and the U.S. team? Uh, did you change your style or did you do any adjustments? Because, you know, when you were in chi Chinese national team, you practice a lot, right? And then when you came to the U.S., you, you didn't have time to practice. So, so what, what did you adjust? Actually, it's not, I don't have time to practice. I yeah. don't have the people to practice with. Yeah. Yeah, I don't so, have the, the people to practice with. And then lucky at that time, uh, I was in Maryland. You know, over there, you know, uh, we have some players that uh, can practice with me, like Todd Suarez. You know, uh, he was on the Olympic team before, and then Brian Pace, and then Sean Lonergan, and then even Sean, Sean O'Neill. You know, we all were in Maryland. So uh, if I want to uh, find the people to practice, you know, I can ask them to practice with. But uh, basically, I, <laughs> I don't practice at all. <laughs> it just, uh, yeah, it just, uh, you know, once you retired yeah. uh, from national team, I you know, I, I, I feel like I really want to, you know, leave this sport. You know, yeah. I don't want to say uh, hate this sport, but I want to, you know, because table tennis is, you know, in my life, it's all in my life. So I yeah. want my life have something new. Yeah. So that's why basically I don't practice. No. Just uh, practice maybe one week before the tournament. Wow. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but, but I didn't. I didn't play that many tournaments. So you didn't change your style. You didn't do the some... style same. Everything's the same, and oh. uh, just basically, I just uh, you know uh, just before I practice a lot, I just yeah. use what I you know have from China, and yeah. then just uh, try to um, maintain my level, which is uh, very difficult. Yeah. Okay. Last one. So. Uh, 
which match is the most impressive one since you represented US? Uh, in this one, uh, I want to say uh, uh, 1999 uh, Pan Am Games. It was oh. in Canada. And that was my first time to represent the US to play the team event. And uh, I remember that, uh, you know, US team lost to Canadian team you know, the maybe, you know, couple years already because they have, a, you know, a world champion Geng Lijuan from China and then oh. they have another, you know, two Chinese players. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, in 1999, so the Pan Am Games at the team event, the things that I remember I will never forget was uh, Coach Doru also uh, will never forget. Um, before the final, right, we uh, put our name down, right? It's like a draw, right? So um, we had a meeting before. So uh, <clears throat> Coach Doru chose that, uh, you know, I played the second match. And then the first match, uh, supposedly Amy. So I played the second match and Tony played the third match. So um, he put name down. And then so once we, uh, switch you have to you know once you put the name down then you switch right you you can see uh, other <clears throat> i mean canadian uh draw right so uh after that so uh coach Doru tell me okay the first match you play uh petra you know the canadian girl so amy gonna play amy uh, uh Lijuan, which you know that's what do we um what do we think you know we what that was what do we plan so uh i I thought, okay, I play in the second match. So I was, you know, just sitting on the bench. And then, uh, so the umpire, you know, came and then she called, she called me, you know, hey, go, uh, you're going to play. I said, no, 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 I play the second match. And then uh, <clears throat> the umpire said, no, you play the first match. And then uh, also Gong Lijuan telling me that, okay, yes, I play you. I was like, no way, no way, that's impossible. So I was turned to uh, Coach Doru that, you know, I asked him, he said, yeah, you play the second match. And then, so we were so, we were all, you know, shocked to why this happened. Yeah. So, uh, so Coach, Coach Doru <clears throat> went to the umpire and then check the draw, you know, what they did. Yeah. The, Can the Canadian, I don't know, either umpire or the coaches, they cheated, they cheated us. They switched the draw. Wow. They switch the draw. You know, uh, how how surprised, right? So I remember Kostor was like, <laughs> like his face turned red. <laughs> He's like, I swear to God, I don't know like this. <laughs> so, um, and then he also telling me that when he put name down, you know, yeah. he just put our last name. And then so when the paper he saw, it was our full name. You know, oh. so how surprised. So um, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to play Gung. <laughs> you know, I'm going to play Gung Lijian, which I never beat her before. You know, I never beat her before. In, uh, in the U.S., once I come to U.S., no, uh, once I come to U.S., I didn't play her. When I play yeah. in China, and then one time world championships, and then I always, you know, I always lose. So I said, no way. Because if we have a one, you know, zero one down, and then yeah. Amy gonna play second match, it's too much pressure on her. So what we want was one one. And then you know what? I got so mad. So all the all the team got mad. So we fight so hard. We're yelling, you know, so loud. We chill like every single ball. You know, usually I don't chill. You know, I'm just uh, I'm very quiet when I play. But that time I chose. And then, you know what? I beat a Gong Lijuan. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah. I Did you guys win? Lijuan. Yeah, we, we won 3-0. Wow. Actually, actually the, the decided match, it's yeah. this match. And also after I, Tony play against the, the, one of the chopper. Yeah. And uh, it was like deals at the, I forgot. It's deals at the fifth, you know, and then play expedite. I was like, my gosh, so excited. So you know, that was my uh, uh, first 
you know, uh, feeling play, I mean, play for US. That was yeah. the really impressed uh, impression. I mean, feel like, oh my gosh, I feel that I really wanted to win, you know? Yeah. yeah. It's always in my mind. <laughs> yes. And that's all my <laughs> question. So right now I hand it over to Coach Doro. Oh, hi, Coach Doro. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. <laughs> how are you? Hi, Coach. How are you? I'm fine. Did you remember you that? <laughs> yes, I remember. And you know what I remember? When uh -huh. I saw you getting mad, uh -huh. I said, okay, we are going to win easily this match now. Because if Gao gets pissed, it's a good times for our team all the time. <laughs> for me, it was so hard to get you pissed during the match uh, because you yes. are so calm all the time. But when you <laughs> always you, when you get mad, you just play much better for some reason. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, you are mean. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you get. You are not mean. I mean, that's a problem. You are a nice person. So at the table, sometimes you gotta get be mean. Yeah, that's sometimes some sometimes you need to be a little like uh, pissed off that you want to do something. Yes. So yeah. I was really pissed off when I saw they switch the draw, the paper. Actually, they switch my draw, my paper. But yeah. it's fine. It passed. We won. So karma yeah. sometimes is a bitch. So. <laughs> I have two short questions for you. Okay. <laughs> two short questions. The first one is, I want you to tell us, you know, as a career as a player, what was the best time the best day of your career as a player and the worst one. So one where you were on top of the world and you felt super happy and the other one is the opposite. You were very disappointed in your result. Uh, to be honestly, the happiest time that as a player is uh, uh, when I play for U.S. team. And then uh, when I uh, travel with you guys, you know, you as my coach, we always, you know, hang on, you know, the match and then shopping and then, you know, eat. So that was my, uh, you know, with a teammate, you know, I remember um, 2005 in China, right? And then we went to somewhere to eat with uh, the whole team. So I really, I really enjoy, you know, uh, to play, you know, for the U.S. team that uh, the whole time I started playing uh, uh, 1997 and then same as you coach, huh? You start coach U.S. team 1997, right? So you and me, we start uh, at the same time. Yeah. And then, uh, so until uh, 2012, yeah. yes, I stopped 2012. So uh, in this um, <clears throat> few years, that was my uh, happiest time uh, in table tennis. Okay, the, the reason that uh, I, I meet a lot of good friends. And, uh, you know, from beginning to the end, I mean, at the end, most likely it's uh, young kids, you know, it's like my daughter age, like, uh, you know, Ariel, Lily and Erica, they're, they're really young, like my daughter. and then. <clears throat> for the before that uh, I started play for US and then at that time I don't speak English at all so uh, everyone uh, tried to uh, you know teach me and help me always use the easy uh, word to uh, let me understand and uh, especially you know in Maryland time you know at that time I meet a lot of good friends and then play with the US team and also, you know, uh, our team leader, um, Bob Fox, always, you know, sitting behind me and then chair for me. And then always coach you, always, you know, sitting there, support me. So, and then I, I fight, you know, I really fight. I mean, as you know, that I'm not, uh, you know, fighter. I'm just an easygoing, you know, person. But when you, uh, when I see you guys sitting there, you know, I don't want to make you guys, you know, disappointed, you know, so I fight, I fight for you guys. And um, 
the bad memory was, um, you know, of course, in China, I played for China, you know, in 1991, uh, you know, the Chinese team lost to um, the South Korea and the North Korea, the, the you, I mean, what do you call the, the team that uh, in the final and combined, I lost, yeah, teams. yes, and I lost two points. So that was a really bad memory uh, in my life. And then, yes, I also have some uh, good memory when I play in Chinese team, you know, when I win the gold medal, you know, and then uh, when I win some good matches and then I also uh, enjoy, it. but that time is very short. You know, so because for you know you play for China. Once you win the medal, it's over. You know, and then tomorrow, it's not supposed to celebrate. It's a new day. You have a next goal. You have to, you know, looking for the next target to to reach. And then for play for US, that we really enjoy. You know, I win or I lose. You guys always there to support me. You know, and then you know association. And then even from USOC, you know, all the friends, you know, support me. So this is my, you know, really, really, you know, happiest time. I really enjoy this moment. Yes. As a player. <laughs> Good. I have uh, just one more. Based on your experience as a player growing up in China and then going here in US playing and now as a coach, what advice would you give to our kids coming up, national team? Yeah, what the best advice or tip you can give them to become a better players, better athletes, and even better person in our USA table tennis environment? Uh, what I want to say to our uh, US, the, the, the younger player, that uh, the key word, it's practice. Practice hard. That's the, that's the only way to be success as a player. You know, I think for overall, all the sports, no matter you do, you know, soccer or baseball, whatever, you know, you have to work hard. And then you have to work hard more than other people. Okay, that's how to make yourself to be success. And uh, don't think you're smart. And then there's a never, <clears throat> there's always people smarter than you. You know, and then listen to the coach and then follow to the coach during the practice during the practice and then when you play the match when you're thinking that you don't know what to do at this moment you have to you have to listen to the coach okay and don't argue with coach <laughs> that's that's my uh yeah i have seen okay. um uh, some some kids you know they are um uh they're questioning their coach and they're thinking that their coach play no good because because they think okay I'm better than you, you know uh, my rating is higher than you. Uh, I can beat you if we play. You know some I can feel those uh, <clears throat> young kids have this kind of feeling. So when they're thinking this way, you're gonna lose. Okay, they don't want to um, listen to uh, coaches' advice, which is uh, totally wrong. Maybe physically coach cannot win you, but as a coach, coach looking for more different, you know, um, angle and then, you know, coach sitting there, they say more, you know, as a player, you don't, don't question coach and don't try to, you know, talking, argue with your coach and you waste your time. So the two key points, work hard and listen to your coach. That's all. Great. Before I, that was my last question, but before I pass it on to Sean, I just want to thank you for being such a good teammate, good athlete, and a 
very good coach in USA and uh, helping our national teams, not team, teams, through all these uh, hard times. That's why I'm, I believe everybody is uh, agreeing with me. And uh, I hope to see you soon, uh, I don't know, somewhere Thank internationally. You. Thank you. You know, I also feel lucky that uh, once I start to play for US, I have you as my coach. You know, okay. you really, you. I really enjoy, I really enjoy that time. And then every single tournament, Olympics, <clears throat> and then <clears throat> world championships. And then you always, you know, um, gave me the easy time. And you know me that I change all the time. So <laughs> you, you really know how to <clears throat> handle, you know, my personality. So which is uh, not easy. And then I'm also, you know, really, really happy that, um, you know, uh, as a U.S. team member and as a coach that, uh, you know, our association have you as coach, as a uh, uh, lead, and I mean, uh, what, what was your position before, you know, and then as a now that really, you know, you know, I'm really happy, you know, so really lucky, you know, we have you. Okay, thank you very much. You looks like you follow your advice very well. Don't argue with the coach. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Great, Gao. Well, it, it's really wonderful um, to hear a lot of your words of wisdom, especially for the young players. With the number of guests that we have on from India, I'm getting inquiries to ask questions about your particular style. And the first question that I've been asked is, what were your favorite drills that you did as a Chinese penhold pips out player that they might be able to share with some of their young junior players? Uh, as, a, as a young players, that uh, the drills, it's very basic. Like uh, when I, um, from, okay, we can say from uh, before, before 12, you know, I'm more looking for the like a fun, uh, fundamental uh, footwork, you know, and the strokes and the footwork. So every day, basically, you just repeat. It's just repeat. And then uh, always try to do more and more, which you can uh, remember, you know, when you see the ball without the thinking, your, foot, uh, your footwork is still, you know, good enough. And along those lines, playing with pips, when you're practicing your serve, was there something that you generally tried to make more spin, focus on placement? As a pips out player, how did you handle improving your serve as a young player? Uh, actually, when I was young, my serve was not that good. I just, uh, I just, I, um, I watch a lot, you know, uh, players, what I think their serve are good. The first you watch, okay? And the second, you have to try to copy their serve, mm -hmm. okay? And then uh, if you get a chance and you can ask them, like I, um, like my team, you know, I come from uh, Hebei province, so which I, uh, we have uh, a lot of world champion. So when they're coming back, back to the team, Normally they're training in Beijing, but when they're back to, uh, back to the team, I get a chance, I ask them, hey, uh, as a good players, as a good serve, and then how do you deal with like, un especially like underspin, how do you do with underspin? How do you use your finger? So how do you, you know, make a fast, long serve? So you try to um, find the opportunity to ask the player who have a serve, you know, like, like, what do you want? So look and then try and then ask and then try again and then practice. Super, super. Going, knowing that you played both with the older ball and the newer ball, do you see that the pips out, for instance, Matthias Falk from Sweden made the finals of the men's singles at the recent world championships. Do you see that the pips out rubber has a chance to succeed at the international level? Uh, yes, I do see that. You know, with the ball bigger 
and bigger, and then uh, even uh, the material changed, right? It's not like uh, the like uh, old material. So I think the ball is getting heavier. You know, I mean, even they say the weight is the same, maybe a little heavier, but you can feel that uh, uh, when pips smash, the ball comes flat. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it it's like I loop, you loop. So we both make a spin. So the ball can make it more spinnier. But if I have a flat, you try to make a spin, which is really hard, you know, really, really difficult. And then maybe for the men's style, you know, men try to lift the ball up. So they need a more distance, they need a more space. So they try to back up. And then you can say the, the Swedish guy, you know, he's tall, his forehand is really strong. So actually compare his backhand and forehand, his backhand is better than forehand. But the problem is you don't want to give him a forehand because you're afraid. Okay, you, you are afraid of the flat ball coming. So you don't, you don't want to give him a forehand. Exactly. Yeah, uh, like, like me, like me. Everyone knows that my forehand is no good. Okay, and I also spend a lot of time to practice my forehand, but in the game, my forehand, my forehand is still no good, but no one want to give my forehand because when I make a one smash, people are afraid. So sometimes you make people afraid, that's also good. <laughs> no, no, I, I think that's really accurate. So my final question, since we have you kind of wearing your coach's hat, you're coaching a player, let's say it's international, and they're coming back to you in between the games. Do you have a philosophy or a mindset of, how much time you spend on tactics or maybe to calm the player down or to give some encouragement how do you manage that one minute time between games so that the player goes out there ready to compete hard uh before you know one minute it's very important you know you have to use this one minute to you know tell your players as much as you want but remember, as a player, you know, when they're really nervous, they don't remember. Okay, you tell them one thing, two things, they only can remember maybe two things. Okay, they cannot remember more than three. Okay, but right now, the rule changed, and you can talk during the match. Mm -hmm. So this one minute, you, it, it's really not, you know, that's so important as before. But again, you know, if you want to uh, specific, uh, specifically mention something that you, you have to use this one minute as a, you know, like a test, uh, like strategy, like, okay, you have to focus on here, you have to focus on there. Because sometimes when the court is so big, and then, or a lot of spectator, you know, they're yelling so loud, you know, like uh, last, I mean, um, uh, in uh, Puerto Rico, you know, the, the Pan Am Cup, you know, play the final, the spectators are so exciting. So they were so loud. So even I tried to tell Lily something, even in that one minute, I really cannot, you know, talk something that Lily, I, I think Lily barely to hear, you know. So at this moment, you, sh you sh try to use your hand, you know, your body language, like, you know, focus the forehand or backhand and the short. So those, uh, you know, as a coach, I just want you uh, tell you that's because I, I used to be a player and then Sean you also as a player before and then you're the coach now so I just want to um, tell the coach to share my experience that uh, don't 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 expect that your players oh why I tell you this you don't listen why I tell you that you don't listen it's not they don't want to listen they couldn't remember because you know too nervous and then they cannot remember that much at a very short time so I just uh, choose the, you know, some important stuff. Basically, I would uh, go for, you know, strategy. Like sometimes you have to really, really, you know, mention, hey, hey, Lily, go forehand, go forehand. You have to say, you know, a couple more times. And then don't need to say too many, like, uh, you know, technique. Oh, forehand, you should go in up. You know, the push, you should, you know, uh, cover your pad or something. This one cannot change. Because technique is, you have to change during the practice. Right now, it's only focused on the, 
uh, uh, strategy. And sometimes for the young players, what I tried, you know, was very um, uh, good that once you tell your kids to do something, tell them repeat. Okay, like I tell you, like I have a player, Rachel Young, and a chopper, right? So I tell her, hey, you chop heavy, you chop no heavy, you chop to forehand, you chop to the backhand. And then it just right after I said, hey, repeat what I said. And then she said, ah, 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 I, 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 I don't remember. So because the, when they're nervous, when they're panic, they really cannot, you know, first they couldn't remember, second, they couldn't understand. So try to use the easy way and then short to do it. You know, I, I think those tips and um, <laughs> suggestions are really true to get the player calm and make sure that they're hearing what you're saying. Um, before I throw it over to Virginia Sung, our CEO, to ask the final questions, I just want to reiterate what Doru has said, not only for you as a great player on Team USA, but the amount of help and support you've given to our national team players to help out and coach both the men's and women's team to our best finish ever in Tokyo at the World Team Cup making the quarterfinals and coaching our great players um, to have some of their best victories internationally. Um, it's, it's really amazing and it definitely makes things look good for the U.S. as we head hopefully towards Tokyo next year and also the World Championships. So thank you, Gao, and then I'm going to send it over to Virginia. Thank you, Sean. Well, thanks, Gal, you know, for what you have done. Um, Hi, Virginia. For team, <laughs> the team you say as a player and now as a coach. Um, my question is, what, where do you see our Team USA in the next five to 10 years? Uh, what is the key for us to succeed, in your opinion? Uh, we should look in uh, focus on our, uh, the younger generation. Uh, like a junior and then uh, I think we should uh, focus on them and then uh, try to find uh, the way how to make them non-stop non-stop to play after they enter to the college because a lot a lot of potential players they stop after you know they get to the college which is a uh, you know it's really really bad I mean no good for for the players for the parents for our association for our sports you know as a as a family you know parents spend a lot of money on their training to go into the tournament and then once they reach the college they just uh, totally you know give up you know which is a uh, wasted money and then as a players you spend so many times on this sports and then you love it and then you cry, you sweat, right? You fight. And then once you get to the college and you're done. So also waste, you know, so many things. And as an association, you know, we spend a lot of money, send them to the different tournament, different country. And then once they enter the college and then they're gone. So our money into the water, nothing, nothing hmm. disappeared. So, uh, yeah, we, I think we should, uh, you know, think how to uh, make them, you know, keep play. You know, that's, I think that's the most important because you don't, you really don't want to, uh, too many players like, uh, okay, of course, you know, the players come from China, you know, the level is high, right? But look right now, our Amy, our Crystal, you know, our younger generation, and then Rachel, Rachel son, and then, you know, like even Lily, when she was young, and Ariel, and then this young kids start to beat player from China. So that meaning a player from China, it, it's not the meaning they're all good, right? So we should try to make our kids think that they are not unbeatable. They, you know, they can't beat them. And then I, I mean, player from China, we cannot always think that, okay, we will have a new one come play for US. And then, you know, we always think this way and our sports, it cannot going up. And then plus the 
the rule, it keep changing. You know, like you cannot play for the other country uh, after certain years. So um, I think we should focus on, on, the, on the junior. And also the players, if you could make them to become a pro, like, like a Canuck, why he's doing so good? Because he become a pro. And then same as Lily and the Wu Yue, Jennifer, and they're playing Europe, right? And they're, that's why they're, they practice more and then their world ranking <clears throat> raise up. They get a more um, uh, international competition uh, experience. So uh, I think that's, that's how I think. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah, I think that's the ongoing problem. And that's probably one of the reasons I quit as well. It just, there's <laughs> nothing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, seriously, I mean, as I remember at that generation, you know, we have you as a young and then Tani and then um, Margaret, right? Margaret from right. Maryland. We don't have that many, you know, um, good. And then, I mean, that many younger players. And then when you see that I'm there all the time, right? And then plus there's a Yasna. And then you can say, oh, I have never can beat them. And they will play like a pro, as a pro. So you quit. And then right. same like right now, you know, if our kids think, oh, there's a one player that I never can get a chance to, 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 uh, to beat, and then they quit. But in the other way around, if they think positive, if they think, okay, I can beat this one, you know, to make myself good. And then they're getting better and better. Right, yeah. Well, also I, I think now our players um, have more options. There's more competitions, right? Where when we were players, we, we don't really have we don't really have a lot of options and we don't have a lot of competitions like the kids we, the kids they do today. Absolutely, I think, you know, for us is how do we create a, a strong foundation and a platform for our young players to continue the career path, continue, you know, uh, become a professional player and um, um, also have the ability, you know, to, to play here in the States. You know, we need to create this kind of environment um, structure for our players. Yeah, yeah. So. so it's your job. <laughs> it's the CEO's job. <laughs> <laughs> I think everyone's here, you know, working beyond and above to really try to uh, promote the sport, try to expand uh, the, the audience here to, to get more exposure. So it's, uh, you know, we're glad to have you as the coach that you can bring so much to our younger players and really table tennis it's it's more of a mind game you know when you pass some stage it's 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 really how you um strategically um set up your game you know know yourself know your opponent so there's a lot more uh that our young kids need, need to learn and uh, you know i was we were at the trials the olympic trials i think now we watch some of the girls, we have very talented girls, you know, Amy or Crystal, Rachel, and they're, you, you see the matches are so close when they play you know, against you know, Liu Zhen and Hui Jing, but that one or two points closeness, maybe it's a five years of practice, right? True. So it's really, you know, parents, sometimes parents will come to say, oh, it was so close, I must be her, but they don't understand that closeness really requires a lot of practice, a lot of experience, and an understanding of the of the game too, right? And yes, and also yes. de de when you develop as a as a adult, you, you really the, the emotion and the psychological um, maturity, and that really makes the difference there. So so I think you know we have world class players like you, you know, um, Yasna as well, and uh, um, Doro. And Sean, I, I think our high performance team is so strong that we can definitely, you know, bring this sport to the next level. And we have, you know, players like like Jennifer, like Tom, you know, they are transitioning, you know, become a, more of a, you know, role model to our younger players, give them more experiences. And um, I think, you know, it just, this is really the best time for us 
to, to really to promote and change the sport. So I thank you again, you know, for what you have done for the, for the Team USA. Thank you. I really, you know, um, uh, enjoy to play uh, for the U.S. team. And I also, you know, love to share uh, my experience and then, you know, whatever I have, you know, for the, you know, from table tennis, I love to share with, you know, all the people who love the sports. And then, uh, you know, I really want to see someday, you know, um, U.S. team can get a medal. It doesn't matter any color, you know, <laughs> can get a medal from the, you know, the, the major, uh, major uh, table tennis tournament, you know, uh, 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 Olympic or, you know, the world championships, you know, I really, really, you know, want to see that if we can get it. I tried, but I can't. <laughs> yeah. That's so. our, that's our common goal here. So. Yeah, everybody work together, yes. Yeah. All right, well, thank you very much, Virginia. And thank you, Jennifer and Doru and Sean and Gaojun. We want to thank you very much for your time today on our Ask the Champ interview series. I want to remind everybody that if you want a lesson from Gao Jun, it is possible. You can do that very easily. She is part of our Connect Coach and Contribute program at USATT. I think I'm first in line, Gao Jun, actually. I'm okay. going to contact you right after this. I need all no the help I can get, believe me. I, You're I also, welcome. I also want to thank all of our friends from India who have joined us for the uh, Ask the Champ questions today and very much appreciate your input. Gao Jun, I want to wish you the best. I want to wish your team the best as well going forward. And we look forward to seeing you at the U.S. Nationals in December in Las Vegas. Thank you. Everybody stay the same. And uh, Thank you, you know, Gao. Ca Thank yeah, California, it's a uh, lockdown again. So uh, everyone have to stay at home again. So our club locked down. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll try to be safe, yes. Well, well you stay safe as well, Gaoju. And thank you very much, yes. everybody. Thank and you. thank you for being a part of USATT's Ask the Champ interview series. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you.